So we've already gone through the process of acquiring our regions of interest to represent different features on the ground and then both qualitatively and quantitatively looking at the separability in terms of the spectral response of our different regions of interest. So the next stage is to actually run a classification. If we go up to classification in the main menu, we've got a number of different options, but we're going to go with supervised today, seeing as we already have the input classes. And again, there's a number of options that we can choose from. We're going to go with one of the most simplest options, and that's the minimum distance. So if we click on that, it's going to ask us what our classification input file is, which is our dark pixel subtraction image. Now here we can choose to, to do a spatial or spectral subset and this would be where in particular for the spectral subset we might choose to not run the classification on all six bands based on what we were looking at in terms of our separability and what our, our optimal separability is and do we actually need to use all of those bands. So for example I might choose to use one one, three, four and five and so that, that will mean that my processing time is much faster yet I still should get just as good a classification result but this, this requires a little bit of practice and trial and, eva and, trial and uh, evaluation there as well. So if I choose those four bands for example and click OK if we wanted to do a spatial subset we could do that at this time and we might also choose to mask the NAN values I'll just pull that up here um, to mask the NANs, which is the, the, the pixel values around the outside of our image. And so if we just remove those from the classification, that just means it's not looking at any of the statistics in those particular pixels, so it's not skewing it that way. So if we click on that, um, whereas actually I've already run this, so I'll just select the mask that's already been created. And we'll click OK. Now we'd like to make a classification of all the classes that, are, that we've put as input. So we'll go select all items there. And if we leave to start with, leave the, the default values here. And we can put in an output file name and an, an output for our rule images. We can also have a quick look at a preview of what the classification is going to look at by clicking on preview there. And this is going to give us an idea of if we are anywhere in the ballpark of getting a decent classification. Now this is quite difficult to see exactly what, what this portion of the image is. So if we go to change view and we can click on image and this little, the little red box here is what it's showing us in terms of this particular area of the classification. So if we move that to an area that we're a little bit more familiar with, so somewhere on Darwin Harbour for example, and OK and OK with that, we now get an, a small area of classification that we can check. And so, for example, I know that this is a waterway, um, the green bits are mangroves, and then I've got some woody and non-woody vegetation. So perhaps we're looking not too bad at this stage. So if we're happy with that, then all we need to do is run the classification by clicking OK. So I've got this one already run, and so I'll open it up in a new display group. Okay, so you can see my classification down here and you'll see as I as I wave my cursor over the classification you'll be able to see the name of the particular class that's been assigned to that individual pixel. So around this out the outside area where it's all grey it's class number nine and they're the masked pixels. Um, we've got class number one here which is water in blue and you can have a look in a little bit more detail in other areas as you go around. Now one thing that is useful to do is to link your images together so you can dynamically view what the classification is compared to what the input data are. So if we right click here and go to link displays and link our two images there. Now if I left click on my image I can dynamically switch between the two. So I can start to have a bit of an idea about what the what the classes are assigned here in the classification versus the input data. Now I might also decide that I don't actually like the colours that I've chosen here. So for example I might decide that this, this area in yellow here, which is woody vegetation, isn't really that representative of woody vegetation. It's not really that intuitive to look at. So I can go to Tools, Colour Mapping, 
and class color mapping which brings up a new little window here and I've got woody vegetation in yellow for example and I might change that to be sea green perhaps okay and I can change I can move these swipes as well to change exactly the color that's going to appear in my image as I as I kill that I can say yes I want to save those changes so now I've got a different looking image up here now what we can also do is in our in our base image here we can go to overlay and classification and this time we'll overlay the classification directly on top of that base image we go OK now this brings up another little window and what we can do is just tick on individual classes one at a time so this helps us to evaluate the classification as well so I click on water for example so the tick box there and you'll see exactly what areas have been classified as water and you can also see the boundary areas here that are perhaps not so good I'll switch on mangroves there and you can see that it's filling in those gaps there as well so you can interactively switch those on and off to have a look at the areas of different have a look at the classification of different areas. One other thing that we can do in terms of looking at changing colors to make your classification look a little bit more similar to your input image is if we go to classification, post classification and assign class colors what's going to happen now is it's going to try and match my individual classes here to what's displayed in display group 1 here which is my um, 542 image display so if I click OK on that my classification image is the minimum distance classification there and OK and it's just thinking for a bit here and then it asks me do I want to keep these new class colors and as you can see how it looks here it's quite different so I'll click OK, click OK for that and reload it and here's my classified image now on the the bottom right here and if we have a look at the scroll image of of our original image you'll see that the colors are matched a lot closer and so sometimes this is a lot easier for looking at image interpretation and evaluating our results